Sitting alone at night in secret study, it is placed on the brass tripod. A slight flame comes out of the emptiness and makes successful that which should not be believed in vain. The wand in the hand is placed in the middle of the tripod's legs. With water, he sprinkles both the hem of his garment and his foot. A voice, fear, he trembles in his robes. Divine splendor, the god, sits nearby. When the litters are overturned by the whirlwind and faces are covered by cloaks, the new republic will be troubled by its people. At this time, the reds and the whites will rule wrongly. In the world, there will be made a king who will have little peace and short life. At this time, the ship of the papacy will be lost, governed to its greatest detriment. They will be driven away for a long, drawn-out fight. The countryside will be most grievously troubled. Town and country will have greater struggle. Carcassonne and Narbonne will have their hearts tied. The eyes of Ravenna will be forsaken when his wings will fall at his feet. The two of Bresse will have made a constitution for Turin and Vercelli, which the French will trample underfoot. Arrived too late, the act has been done. The wind was against them, letters intercepted on their way. The conspirators were fourteen of a party. By Rousseau shall these enterprises be undertaken. How often will you be captured, O city of the sun, changing laws that are barbaric and vain? Bad times approach you, no longer will you be enslaved. Great Hadri will revive your veins. From the Orient will come the African heart to trouble Hadri and the heirs of Romulus. Accompanied by the Libyan fleet, the temples of Malta and nearby islands shall be deserted. A coffin is put into the vault of iron where seven children of the king are held. The ancestors and forebears will come forth from the depth of hell, lamenting to see thus dead the fruit of their line. The motion of senses, heart, feet and hands will be in agreement between Naples, Leon and Sicily. Swords, fire, floods, then the noble Romans drowned, killed or dead because of a weak brain. There will soon be talk of a treacherous man who rules a short time, quickly raised from low to high estate. He will suddenly turn disloyal and volatile. This man will govern Verona. Through anger and internal hatreds, the exiles will hatch a great plot against the king. Secretly, they will place enemies as a threat, and his own adherents will find sedition against them. From the enslaved populace, songs, chants and demands, while princes and lords are held captive in prisons. These will in the future by headless idiots be received as divine prayers. Mars threatens us with the force of war and will cause blood to be spilt seventy times. The clergy will be both exalted and reviled moreover by those who wish to learn nothing of them. A scythe joined with a pond in Sagittarius at its highest ascent. Plague, famine, death from military hands. The century approaches its renewal. For forty years, the rainbow will not be seen. For forty years, it will be seen every day. The dry earth will grow more parched and there will be great floods when it is seen. Because of French discord and negligence, an opening shall be given to the Mohammedans. The land and sea of Siena will be soaked in blood, and the port of Marseille covered with ships and sails. When the snakes surrounded the altar, and the Trojan blood is troubled by the Spanish, because of them a great number will be lessened. The leader flees, hidden in the swampy marshes. The cities of Tours, Orléans, Blois, Angers, Reims and Nantes are troubled by sudden change. Tents will be pitched by people of foreign tongues. Rivers, darts at Rennes, shaking of land and sea. The rock holds in its depths white clay, which will come out milk white from a cleft. Needlessly troubled people will not dare touch it, unaware that the fountain of the earth 
is of clay. A thing existing without any senses will cause its own end to happen through artifice. At Autun, Shalan, Langre, and the two Sen, there will be great damage from hail and ice. In the third month, at sunrise, the boar and the leopard meet on the battlefield. The fatigued leopard looks up to heaven and sees an eagle playing around the sun. At the new city, he is thoughtful to condemn. The bird of prey offers himself to the gods. After victory, he pardons his captives. At Cremona and Mantua, great hardships will be suffered. The lost thing is discovered, hidden for many centuries. Pasteur will be celebrated almost as a godlike figure. This is when the moon completes her great cycle, but by other rumours he shall be dishonoured. The great man will be struck down in the day by a thunderbolt, an evil deed foretold by the bearer of a petition. According to the prediction, another falls at night time. Conflict at Rheims, London, and pestilence in Tuscany. Beneath the oak tree of Gienne, struck by lightning, the treasure is hidden not far from there. That which for many centuries had been gathered, when found, a man will die, his eye pierced by a spring. Tobriok will fear the barbarian fleet for a time, then much later the western fleet. Cattle, people, possessions, all will be quite lost. What a deadly combat in Taurus and Libra. When the fish that travels over both land and sea is cast up onto the shore by a great wave, its shape foreign, smooth and frightful, from the sea the enemies soon reach the walls. Because of the storm at sea, the foreign ship will approach an unknown port, notwithstanding the signs of the palm branches. Afterwards, there is death and pillage. Good advice comes too late. The wars in France will last so many years. Beyond the reign of the Castellon kings, an uncertain victory will crown three great ones, the eagle, the cock, the moon, the lion, and the sun in its house. The great empire will soon be exchanged for a small place, which soon will begin to grow, a small piece of tiny area in the middle of which he will come to lay down his scepter. Near a great bridge, near a spacious plain, the great lion with the imperial forces will cause a falling outside the austere city. Through fear the gates will be unlocked for him. The bird of prey flying to the left. Before battle is joined with the French, he makes preparations. Some will regard him as good, others bad or uncertain. The weaker party will regard him as a good omen. The young lion will overcome the older one in a field of combat in single fight. He will pierce his eyes in their golden cage, two wounds in one. Then he dies a cruel death. Too late the king will repent that he did not put his adversary to death. But he will soon come to agree to far greater things, which will cause all in his line to die. Shortly before sunset, battle is engaged. A great nation is uncertain. Overcome, the seaport makes no answer. The bridge and the grave, both in foreign places. The sun and the eagle will appear to the victor. An empty answer assured to the defeated. Neither bugle nor shouts will stop the soldiers. Liberty and peace, if achieved in time, through death. At night, the last one will be strangled in his bed, because he became too involved with the blonde heir elect. The empire is enslaved, and three men substituted. He is put to death, with neither letter nor packet ready. The false trumpet concealing madness will cause Byzantium to change its laws. From Egypt, there will go forth a man who wants the edict withdrawn, changing money and standards. The city is besieged and assaulted by night. Few have escaped, a battle not far from the sea. A woman faints with joy at the return of her son. Poison 
in the folds of the hidden letters. The tenth day of the April Calends, calculated in Gothic fashion, is revived again by wicked people. The fire is put out and the diabolic gathering seek the bones of the demon of Celus. Before the empire changes, a very wonderful event will take place. The field moved, the pillar of porphyry put in place, changed on the gnarled rock. In a short time, sacrifices will be resumed. Those opposed will be put to death like martyrs. There will no longer be monks, abbots, or novices. Honey shall be far more expensive than wax. A founder of sects, much trouble for the accuser. A beast in the theatre prepares the scene and plot. The author, ennobled by acts of older times, the world is confused by schismatic sects. Very near Oc, Lector and Mirand, a great fire will fall from the sky for three nights. The cause will appear both stupefying and marvellous. Shortly afterwards, there will be an earthquake. The speeches of Lake Lamar will become angered. The days will drag out into weeks, then months, then years, then all will fail. The authorities will condemn their useless powers. When twenty years of the moon's reign have passed, another will take up his reign for seven thousand years. When the exhausted sun takes up his cycle, then my prophecy and threats will be accomplished. Long before these happenings, the people of the East, influenced by the moon, in the year 1700, will cause many to be carried away and will almost subdue the northern area. From the three water signs will be born a man who will celebrate Thursday as his holiday. His renown, praise, rule and power will grow on land and sea, bringing trouble to the east. The head of Ares, Jupiter and Saturn, eternal god, what changes? Then the bad times will return again after a long century. What turmoil in France and Italy. Two evil influences in conjunction in Scorpio, the great lord is murdered in his room. A newly appointed king persecutes the church, the lower parts of Europe and in the north. Alas, how we will see a great nation sorely troubled and the holy law in utter ruin, Christianity governed throughout by other laws when a new source of gold and silver is discovered. Two revolutions will be caused by the evil scythe-bearer, making a change of reign and centuries. The mobile sign thus moves into its house, equal in favour to both sides. In the land with a climate opposite to Babylon, there will be a great shedding of blood. Heaven will seem unjust both on land and sea and in the air. Sects, famine, kingdoms, plagues, confusion. Sooner and later you will see great changes made, dreadful horrors and vengeance. For as the moon is thus led by its angel, the heavens draw near to the balance. The trumpet shakes with great discord, an agreement broken, lifting the face to heaven. The bloody mouth will swim with blood, the face anointed with milk and honey lies on the ground. Through a slit in the belly, a creature will be born with two heads and four arms. It will survive for some few years. The day that Alquiloe celebrates his festivals for Sana, Turin, and the ruler of Ferrara will follow. The exiles deported to the islands at the advent of an even more cruel king will be murdered. Two will be burnt who are not sparing in their speech. An emperor will be born near Italy, who will cost the empire very dearly. They will say, when they see his allies, that he is less a prince than a butcher. The wretched, unfortunate republic will again be ruled by new authority. The great amount of ill will accumulated in exile will make the Swiss break their important agreement. Alas, what a great loss there will be to learning before the cycle of the moon is completed fire, great floods by more ignorant rulers, 
How long the centuries until it is seen to be restored? Pestilences extinguished, the world becomes smaller. For a long time the lands will be inhabited peacefully. People will travel safely through the sky, over land and seas. Then wars will start up again. At night they will think they have seen the sun when they see the half-pig man. Noise, screams, battles seen, fought in the skies. The brute beasts will be heard to speak. A child without hands, never so great a thunderbolt seen. The royal child, wounded at a game of tennis. At the well, lightning strikes, joining together, three trussed up in the middle under the oaks. He who then carries the news, after a short while, will stop to breathe. Vivier, Tournant, Montferrand, and Pradel, hail and storm will make them grieve. The great famine which I sense approaching will often turn in various areas, then become worldwide. It will be so vast and long-lasting that they will grab roots from the trees and children from the breast. Oh, to what a dreadful and wretched torment are three innocent people going to be delivered. Poison suggested, badly guarded, betrayal delivered up to horror by drunken executioners. The great mountain, seven stadia round, after peace, war, famine, flooding, it will spread far, drowning great countries, even antiquities and their mighty foundations. Rain, famine, and war will not cease in Persia. Too great a faith will betray the monarch. Those actions started in France will end there, a secret sign for on to be sparing. The marine tower will be captured and retaken three times by Spaniards, Barbarians, and Ligurians. Marseille and I, Alès by men of Pisa, Devastation, fire, sword, pillage of Avignon by the Turinese. The inhabitants of Marseille completely changed, fleeing and pursued as far as Lyon. Narbon, Toulouse, angered by Bordeaux, the killed and captive are almost one million. France shall be accused of neglect by her five partners. Tunis, Algiers, stirred up by the Persians. Lyon, Seville and Barcelona having failed, they will not have the fleet because of the Venetians. After a rest, they will travel to Epirus, a great help coming from around Antioch. The curly-haired king will strive greatly for the empire. The brazen beard will be roasted on a spit. The tyrant of Siena will occupy Savona. Having won the fort, he will restrain the marine fleet. Two armies under the standard of Ancona, the leader will examine them in fear. The man will be called by a barbaric name that three sisters will receive from destiny. He will speak then to a great people in words and deeds. More than any other man will have fame and renown. A promontory stands between two seas, a man who will die later by the bit of a horse. Neptune unfurls a black sail for his man, the fleet near Gibraltar and Rocheval. To an old leader will be born an idiot heir, weak both in knowledge and in war. The leader of France is feared by his sister, battlefields divided, conceded to the soldiers. Bazas, Lector, Condom, Auch and Egan are troubled by laws, disputes and monopolies. Carcassonne, Bordeaux, Toulouse and Bayonne will be ruined when they wish to renew the massacre. From the sixth bright celestial light it will come to thunder very strongly in Burgundy. Then a monster will be born of a very hideous beast. In March, April, May and June, great wounding and worrying. Nine will be set apart from the human flock, separated from judgment and advice. Their fate is to be divided as they depart. K, the L, dead, banished and scattered. When the great wooden columns tremble in the south wind, covered with blood, such a great assembly then pours forth that Vienna and the land of Austria will tremble. The alien nation will divide the spoils, 
Saturn in dreadful aspect in Mars, dreadful and foreign to the Tuscans and Latins, Greeks who will wish to strike. The moon is obscured in deep gloom, his brother becomes bright red in colour. The Great One hidden for a long time in the shadows will hold the blade in the bloody wound. The king is troubled by the queen's reply. Ambassadors will fear for their lives. The greater of his brothers will doubly disguise his action. Two of them will die through anger, hatred, and envy. When the great queen sees herself conquered, she will show an excess of masculine courage. Naked, on horseback, she will pass over the river. Pursued by the sword, she will have outraged her faith. Earth shaking fire from the center of the earth will cause tremors around the new city. Two great rocks will war for a long time, then Arethusa will redden a new river. The divine wrath overtakes the great prince a short while before he will marry. Both supporters and credit will suddenly diminish. Counsel, he will die because of the shaven heads. Those of Lerida will be in the Mosse, kill all those from the Loire and Seine. The seaside track will come near the high valley when the Spanish open every route. Bordeaux and Poitiers, at the sound of the bell, will go with a great fleet as fast as Langon. A great rage will surge up against the French when a hideous monster is born near Orgon. The gods will make it appear to mankind that they are authors of a great war before the sky was seen to be free of weapons and rockets. The greatest damage will be inflicted on the left. Under one man, peace will be proclaimed everywhere, but not long after will be looting and rebellion. Because of a refusal, town, land, and sea will be broached, about a third of a million dead or captured. The Italian lands near the mountains will tremble, the cock and the lion not strongly united. In place of fear, they will help each other, Freedom alone moderates the French. The tyrant Selim will be put to death at the harbour, but liberty will not be regained, however. A new war arises from vengeance and remorse. A lady is honoured through force of terror. In front of a monastery will be found a twin infant from the illustrious and ancient line of a monk. His fame, renown, and power through sects and speech is such that they will say the living twin is deservedly chosen. A man will be charged with the destruction of temples and sects, altered by fantasy. He will harm the rocks rather than their living, ears filled with ornate speeches. That which neither weapon nor flame could accomplish will be achieved by a sweet speaking tongue in council. Sleeping in a dream, the king will see the enemy, not in war or of military blood. The leader who will conduct great numbers of people far from their skies to foreign customs and language. Five thousand will die in Crete and Thessaly, the leader fleeing in a sea-going supply ship. The great king will join with two kings, united in friendship. How the great household will sigh around Narbonne. What pity for the children. For a long time, a great bird will be seen in the sky, near Dole and the lands of Tuscany. He holds a flowering branch in his beak. But he dies too soon, and the war ends.